Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am gonna try and do this quickly, but it's quite a lot of fragrances. So there won't be detailed descriptions. Quite a lot of these I've already reviewed anyway. So I'll probably try and link the reviews in the description if you're interested in more on any of these fragrances. If I don't have a review, please ask me and I can always let you know in the comments how they smell or even do a review in the future. So today's video is about my fragrance rotation. I'm going to show you the fragrances that I've been that have been in my rotation and I have been wearing more often. So this isn't most worn. You will see, I think all the fragrances that were in my most worn video will be here, unless I've left them lying around the house and forgotten about them. But this is about the fragrances that have been in my rotation, sat there in front of me to pick from for the last few months that I've now decided to have a little change up, change things around we're not quite ready to step into spring, but I have decided to just change the rotation up a little bit more. I'm actually trying to stop myself from wearing my most worn fragrances because they're getting very, very overused. Certain fragrances, because I've fallen head over heels in love with them, and they're getting used almost on a daily basis, some of these, and I want to kind of put those out of the way a little bit and give my other fragrances a chance. Now there is a thing that that happens on YouTube, certain videos that come up with a title, Shop My Stash, and I kind of wanted to incorporate that with this video. So my idea is I get to reacquaint myself with fragrances I still love, but they've been kind of put to the side because of new loves, because we're a fickle bunch, aren't we, us fragrance lovers? So this is, my way of shopping my stash, therefore uh, increasing my love of my own fragrances that I already own, and hopefully helping me to say no when I feel the urge to buy something new. So I want to be more careful about my purchases. So without any further ado, we're two and a, well, nearly three minutes in, and we haven't even got a fragrance out yet. Let's go. So one fragrance I've been reaching for loads and loads and loads and loads and loads and I absolutely love it is Byzance from Ormond Jane. And I don't think I've reviewed it yet. Now I haven't, but I've talked about it quite a lot and I will be reviewing it. But for now, I'm gonna put it away in the cupboard upstairs out of sight because look how much I've worn since I received it in January. I mean, that's crazy, isn't it? I have been re wearing the heck out of it because I love it so much. So it's going away. It's a it's a vanilla fruity fragrance with a gorgeous sort of suede like texture, kind of like irisy, a little bit milky, just beautiful. I really, really love it. Spicy as well. There's some pepper in there. But I'm putting it out of the way so that I stop wearing the heck out of it just for a while. And then maybe when I do reacquaint myself with it, I'm gonna fall in love again. Another one, my most worn fragrance recently has been Iris Shot from Olfactive Studios, a gorgeous iris, ambrette, sort of carrot seed, musky, uh, slightly gourmand iris perfume. I can't get enough of it, so I'm gonna put it out of sight for a little while just so that I can reignite the passion later on. My signature scent is my insolence. This definitely gets quite a lot of use. I've got two bottles, no, I've got three bottles. I've got two 50 mils and a 30 mil. So I'm gonna put this out of sight for a while. My insolence is an, another almond powdery musky vanilla with a little bit of uh, white floral in there. I love it so much. It's very gentle, subtle, delicate. It's very me, I just feel very comfortable wearing it but I need to put it out of mind, out of sight, so that I can start to enjoy other things. Tiger Tiger, Francesca Bianchi, another one. You can see there's a fair dent in that and I've only had it a month or so. A gorgeous honey dripping white floral on a vanilla-y, suede like base. I love it, so we're gonna put it out of sight. And this is Irises from Tiani Reinfall, and this is a 
This one, I really love the opening. So obviously it's all natural when it comes to Tierney Reinfeld and there's a lot of this beautiful iris in here, which is stunning in the opening. And I really love it. The dry down's got quite a lot of oak moss and I don't love it quite so much when it gets further into the dry down. It's got this kind of um, green, sharp, slightly woody-ish feel to it. But the opening is so addictive and I think this jasmine is like more florals in here than just iris. It's gorgeous, so I'm putting it out of sight. So you can see I've made a little dent in there. I'll stick with, so the cat's just down here. We'll stick with Tierney Reinfeldt and another one I wear fairly often. I, I try not to wear it too often because it's really precious to me. It's embers. I don't need to say too much about it except that it is my favourite perfume in the world. The most beautiful vanilla and my sort sandalwood com combination. Sweetie, oh don't knock my perfumes over darling. Here she comes. Um, so yeah, I don't wear it loads and loads, but it's there in my rotation and every now and then, even if it's not my scent of the day, I might just spray one spray on my hand to enjoy it. So I need to put that away for a while. And this one is Alien and it's called Le Goût de Parfum or Taste of Fragrance. This is a long discontinued variation on Alien Essence de Parfum. I'd say it's pretty close to Essence de Parfum. It's slightly more gourmand, a bit more caramel. And I haven't worn this loads, but it's been out in my rotation. I've worn it a couple of times and I'm gonna put it out of sight. This is Amarina Cherry, which is a Lost Cherry dupe that I actually prefer to the original Tom Ford Lost Cherry. Voluptuous, rich cherry almond and liqueur fragrance and I'm gonna pop it out of the way. Now there's a couple in my rotation that are staying and I'm gonna come to those in a minute. This is Ellie Saab's Rose Essence Number no. One. I've worn it a few times and it's uh, a, a full on rose with kind of like a, a bit of a slightly resin slash amber base but it's mostly like just a very rich dark voluptuous rose. I'm going to put that one away. Bukhara from Galavan is uh, another musky iris fragrance. It's got a little bit of jasmine, a little bit of spice. I absolutely love it. It smells amazing but I'm going to give it a little break for a while. You can see there's a decent dent in that one as well. I'm going to give it a little break cat's still here by the way and then this is my atomizer the bell bell the bee bottle is upstairs I didn't bring that down this is le plus beau jour de ma vie it's a sugared almond orange blossom musky vanilla scent it is absolutely stunning I don't reach for it that often I put it on the other day and I was like wow this is amazing, but I think I don't want to wear it too often. I got it in Paris and I spent lots of money on it and it's very special to me. So I don't want to wear the heck out of it anyway. So I'm gonna put this one out of sight for a little while. Now the next three are staying in my rotation because they are what I call my easy grab and go fragrances. Fragrances that just work, they feel comfortable, they feel easy, breezy. I love how they smell, but they're not too heavy. I still really enjoy the lighter fragrances. So this one's Misty or Sherry. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a few variations of this particular perfume. So I'm gonna put all of them but this one away I'm just gonna wear this one. This is the, oh, now I have to remember, is it the 2012? I think this is uh, reformulated, but still, oh God. I can't remember what year this one is, 2008, 2012. I've done a video on all the different variations. I think this is a Fran Francois Damaschi 
reformulation. So it's slightly different to the original Miss Dior Sherry, which has the silver writing all the way across. But I've decided just to keep this one out and it's my easy grab and go fragrance just to uh, wear, it doesn't matter what I'm doing, happily just wear it indoors, happy to wear it if I'm going out for a walk, going shopping, whatever. It's just a, they say fruity musky floral. So the notes are actually on here because it's a tester and it's mandarin, jasmine, tuberose, patchouli. They're the only listed notes. I would say that there's a kind of like a musky element to it. A little bit of texture that comes with kind of like a nice crispy musk, if that makes sense. So it's got that clean feeling, almost like laundry musk really, but it smells better than that, of course. So kind of exciting really to change the whole collection. This is all the stuff that's downstairs. That's what I usually choose from. So it's all gonna go upstairs and then, um, I've bought some stuff from upstairs downstairs. So this, I have gone for another Miss Dior option that's stay in because I do enjoy just spritzing a little bit of this on every now and then. And this is the Miss Dior Extract de Parfum. I believe this is the current formulation. I got this as a tester on eBay. I really love it. It doesn't last very long. It doesn't project very far you would expect an extract to have a bit better performance than the Eau de Parfums, but in this case, that's not the case. However, it is a different smell. Um, this is richer, the fruity elements are richer, they're not as light and fresh. It's not a heavy fragrance, it's not like the original, the current formulation Eau de Parfum is very heavy. The patchouli is very heavy, and the rose is very rich and there's sort of like an ambery vanilla. This is lighter than that, but it's heavier than the one I just showed you. So it's kind of like a, a sweeter version of Sherry, really. We'll, we'll call it that, slightly sweeter, slightly richer version of Sherry, maybe heavier on the pink fruit elements, syrupy kind of pink fruits in here. So that's missed your extract de parfum or extrait de parfum. One more that's staying in the rotation is Violet in Love from Nikolai. And this is again just because it's an easy breezy, easy to love, grab and go fragrance. A gorgeous raspberry and violet concoction with some sort of muskiness. And it's just pretty, it's very pretty, but it's not super, super too girly pretty it's got a little bit of an edge to it sort of like musky musky element but I love it I really love it so um, and because it's so easy to wear easy to love I can wear it in any situation I love just being I love a, a grab and go I mean if all of my fragrances were very easy breezy I'd probably find that a bit boring I like some very different types of fragrances to choose from but as a grab and go, I really do love wearing that. So that's um, staying. So I've, I'll put that with the two uh, Miss Dior fragrances. And then I'm going to show you some things that are coming into the rotation. I'll tell you what, before we do that, I've got something that I want to say to you, but I don't want to say it. So I reckon you might enjoy hearing it from my friend Brandon. So here's Brandon from the Da Vinci's Alchemist. He's got a very important message for you. Look, Claire, all I'm saying is that after that session, I can barely walk. I gotta get something to eat. Oh, hey, <laughs> well, this is awkward. What are you guys doing in here, in my kitchen? Uh, well, since we're talking about Claire, if you haven't subscribed to her channel yet, do it now. If you have not uh, hit that thumbs up to like this kick-ass video, do it now. And don't forget to beat the shit out of that notification bell so you know when she drops those future sexy ass videos. Now, if you excuse me, get the hell out of my kitchen. I'm hungry. Thank Goodbye. you, Brandon. If you want to go and check out his amazing videos, then you really must. I'm going to link his channel below. Do go and subscribe if you're not already. So let's move on to the fragrances that are coming into the rotation. We've got a super floral one here. And this is a Zhivago 24K amazing presentation here. I love this. The sprayer is 
awesome. I just sprayed some upstairs and it's like, it's well, I don't want to spray the cat. She's, her head's over that way. So I'm going to spray it like that. So it's one of those, I guess it's a pressurized atomizer so you can control how much comes out and it's a nice big wide spray. Love that. So the fragrance is a kind of a clean, soapy white floral concoction. It's very reassuring, but confident and slightly sexy in a very old school kind of way. Not the kind of fragrance I reach for loads, but something that I think I will enjoy wearing from time to time. This one has some gold flakes inside. They seem to have... <laughs> It's got gold flakes in, but it feels like they've disappeared. Uh, there's not that many in there anymore. You might be able to just catch a few. Yeah, that's strange. Yeah, there's a few gold flakes floating around, but I feel like there's not as many as there was, which is very strange. But anyway, it's kind of like soapy, clean, and uh, grown up type of scent. So I'll pop that back over here because that's staying downstairs new to my collection oh sweetie you're gonna knock everything over off you go go on get on the floor good girl new to my collection is a cheapie and it's called want and it's by d squared d squared are a designer italian designer house so they uh, mainly do clothes but they have been doing fragrances for a little while now this one's now discontinued but you can get it super super cheap i got this 30 mil for 15 pounds and it was a blind buy and it's actually a really, really good vanilla fragrance. It's a vanilla with a little bit of floral. I think it's a little bit of rose and I'm not sure if there's a white floral in here as well. But mostly you're going to get quite a creamy vanilla, but it's got, I think it's got natural vanilla in it. It lists Madagascar vanilla and vanilla absolute in the note listing. And it does smell to me like there's natural vanilla. There might be some vanilla in as well, which would make, because it's quite sweet, but it's a really, really good vanilla fragrance. So I'm gonna give that a few wearings. I definitely want to give you a full review on that one. Haven't worn this one in ages. Intense Cafe from Montau. It's a rose and vanilla with a hint of coffee. I think everyone knows about that one enough. So I'm gonna give that another go. B from Zoologist. Absolutely love that. You can see I've made a fair old dent in that. And it's, it's like smelling a crunchy bar. It's just gorgeous honeycomb and a little bit floral, a little bit, a touch of heliotrope, which gives it almondy element, some vanilla, tons more stuff going on in there, but a beautiful fragrance. And I feel like as we are now approaching, hopefully spring, or something about this feels sort of springy, maybe because it's a bee and bees, you know, start to come out when the weather gets good. I don't know, but I really love that. So I'm popping that into the rotation. This one is my atomizer of Iris Ganache from Guerlain. Gorgeous Iris, white chocolate, little bit of cinnamon, very, very smooth, tons of vanilla. Gorgeous fragrance, Iris Ganache. Looking forward to wearing a bit more of that. And this is Tobacco Rose from Papillon. Haven't worn this one in quite a while. A savory rose. Savory, there's hay in here, which kind of has this kind of like dry yet rich. You, I mean, you know what hay, like, hay smells like. So it's hay absolute. I think, and beeswax. So you get all the these different textures and savory kind of smells, which I really like. And this one has a fair bit of oak moss in the dry down, which I used to think was vetiver. There might be vetiver as well, I'm not sure. But I used to mix up, now that I've smelt more perfumes and understand what oak moss is, I can, I can kind of get it. So if you like oak moss, uh, the dry down of this you're gonna love. SP Parfums, unfortunately no longer trading, but doesn't mean I can't enjoy the beautiful fragrances. SP Musk here, and this has Acacia, also known as Hawthorne, which I think is also Mimosa, I could be wrong. And 
there's like a slight greenness but it's a sweet dewy greenness and spray a little bit because this, oh. <laughs> there we go and it's got a bite to it a little a musky bite and it's not a dirty musk at all don't think this smells like deer musk or or any secretions from animals at all to me it's quite a clean musk and it's got jasmine sandback which is gorgeous and it's kind of the jasmine in here is almost like the jasmine in alien it's not as big and loud as in alien by Thierry Mugler but it's that kind of alien jasmine smell it doesn't smell like natural jasmine bush it smells like a jasmine that has been almost interpreted by an abstract artist so i absolutely love sp musk it's a gorgeous fragrance another galan i did wear this the other day actually and this is my atomizer i've left the bottle upstairs and this is Mon Precious Nectar, a beautiful uh, spring floral gourmand. It's a floor mond again. It's another orange blossom, almond, musk type scent with vanilla as well. Um, it's a little bit rich and syrupy and it's called Mon Precious Nectar and it, it couldn't be named more appropriately. You really do smell like a flower nectar that's maybe uh, had some added syrup to it so mon precious nectar i look forward to wearing another floral i look forward to wearing is blue lotus from tioni reinfell this has been downstairs because i did have all my tioni reinfells all lined up so it has been downstairs hasn't had as much of a of a wearing these sort of colder months because it has this kind of fresh not watery exactly but it does have this serene clean clear turquoise pond like feel which is kind of hard to explain but it also does have some gourmand elements and it does remind me of a, a beautiful custard pastry at the same time as having floral elements to it anyway i love it love it love it so i'm looking forward to wearing that more often And then we have Sex and the Sea Neroli from Francesca Bianchi. And this has got so many notes in it. I'm not going to be able to tell you what they all are, but I think there's tuberose and clearly there's Neroli. To me, there's kind of like a bitter green, fresh opening. So that would be Neroli, maybe Pettigrain, that kind of thing. Citrusy, but with a, uh, quite a, a sweet and rich smoothness to it at the same time. Despite being called Sex and the Sea Neroli, you might actually find this is far too rich and heavy for a really hot day. I don't know, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm looking forward to doing so. I've also got the matching body oil for that, so I'll have that out next to it so I can use both at the same time. I've got two travel sizes. This is Violet Parfums. I think they call it Violet Parfums. Yeah, uh, they're just called Violet Paris, actually. This is Poupre d'Autom. And it's a violet scented perfume. It smells to me like a little bit like a cherry bakewell, but a kind of chalky, chalky violet with a cherry bakewell like element to it. So it's a bit almondy. It smells like a perfume still, but it, it's um, kind of chalky and palmer violety so you get a packet of palmer violets imagine you just smash them up to to a powder and like that's in there as well so i love that and then this one is another discontinued fragrance it's from 4160 tuesdays it's called orian it's an eau de parfum and it's like a vintage clean it's like an uh, an elegant lady's vanity from you know years and years ago so you've got powders and makeup and lotions and posh soaps it's like all of that together with a violety kind of feel I can't remember the notes my guess is there's violet uh, iris maybe aldehydes to give it that soapy creaminess um, 
love it i just love it but it is discontinued and that's all i've got so i've been a bit hoardy about it in fact i haven't used it because i don't i can't replace it i really really love it that's it that's all of them thank you so much for watching don't forget what brandon said now will you don't forget to go and find brandon if you don't know him already and subscribe to his channel and that is it i will see you in another video